Abin Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Tim Cyclesman Wood, editor of Cycles News and Views on Cyclesman.com. Welcome back to the show, Tim. Well, Jim, thanks again for having me. Tim, the confusion over who's won the presidential election, is that affecting the markets, if you can tell or, or not tell so far? Well, I did an extensive study on that in the in the last letter and uh, <laughs> lots of details and sl- dicing and slicing the data and looking at it. And, um, you know, people make an argument that it, there, that it matters. But I think it's coincidental. You know, I, I, as I look at it, you know, the market does what the market does, and um, it, it's a, I think it's a coincidental event uh, who's president or when the election comes along or, or whatever. And I diced and sliced the data and looked at, you know, periods of Republican, periods of Democrat, uh, periods where there were where there, where there were changes, you know, in in, in um, uh, parties and so on and so forth and Dyson sliced all the data and it's all in the letter but anyway long story short my conclusion is I, I really don't think it matters the market does what the market does and that probably means whatever trend was going into the election does it continue afterwards in general yes <clears throat> I, I think so uh, I mean that's the basic conclusion and another Technician I know, Ike Iosif, uh, he did a little study too and he, he came to the pretty much the same conclusion. I know Bob Prechter has done one. I haven't pre- uh, read Prechter's work, so I, I'm not sure what conclusion or what angle he attacked it at. But, um, uh, you know, so I can't really speak for him, but yes, I think that's generally the case. And, and in that respect, you know, the market really since June, July, more so since, uh, since, um, you know, September, it's been in a you know kind of a, a, a I won't say topping process, but it's been in a, at a juncture for a topping process. It's been at a a really you know critical turn point, if you will, lack of better words, uh, uh, one of those intersections where the opportunity is there uh, for the turn, and it's been struggling with it. I mean, we've been sideways since then. We've we've had a couple of declines. We went down into the into the uh, September low, which was an intermediate degree low, and then. Of course, we rallied out of that and then declined, and now we're rallying out of that. And, you know, net-net, we've gone nowhere since, you know, mid to early August. So, or mid-August, I should say. So, <clears throat> here we sit. And so, yes, there is some indecisiveness. I think probably the weakness last week may have been in in light of the, you know, the pending election. The election's behind us now. The market's rallying again. I think it's coincidental uh, looking at it from the cyclical setup. But, all in all, we are at a cyclical juncture where, you know, the market, it, 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 it uh, certainly could put in some sort of a top if it wanted to. The, um, the same thing with, um, with gold. Of course, we had intermediate degree lows there um, back in September. And uh, we've had intermediate degree lows pretty much in, in, in all asset classes. And we have the same sort of general thing where we're at this indecisive, critical, um, cyclical juncture. And so on the one hand, yeah, I can see how you can argue, well, that's because of the election. And okay, well, okay, maybe it is, but maybe it didn't. And like I said, I think it's kind of coincidental, but we are at an indecisive juncture. We'll have more with Tim, Cycles Man Wood, right after this. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlin, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. 
Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Value from success, growth, and discovery. Golden Arrow Resources is a well-funded gold copper exploration company with proven management and prospective properties in Chile, Argentina, and Paraguay. Golden Arrow trades on the Toronto Venture Exchange, symbol GRG, on Frankfurt, symbol G6A, and the OTCQB, symbol GARWF. For more information, visit us at goldenarrowresources.com or call Sean at 778-686-0135. Welcome back. We're speaking with Tim Cycles Van Wood. Tim, what's going on with the U.S. dollar? Well... The, the same sort of thing. The dollar we made, uh, or it made, uh, an intermediate term low back in September. I think at a higher level, we have, in my, in, in, you know, in, in my world, there's a, uh, or in the dollar, where there's a four year cycle pop. And I think that four year cycle pop is in. And I think we talked about it before. Uh, that doesn't mean that I'm overly bearish on the dollar and that it's, oh my God, the dollar's going to crash. It's the end of the dollar. I'm not saying that sort of thing. But I do think that the four-year cycle top is in place in the dollar uh, longer term, which means there's going to be pressure on the dollar until we get into that next low. Uh, again, doesn't mean it has to fall apart. But in the shorter term, we had an intermediate degree low. We have a cross current, is what I'm saying. The, the, the intermediate degree cycle bottomed in September, <clears throat> and it is struggling here throughout. I mean, obviously, the dollar will pop a little bit, and then it comes under pressure. So we, we, you know, we, we have this intermediate degree rally. As of now, it's still intact. But if it fails, it's going to leave the dollar set up um, for what I think will be further weakness into that higher degree low. And then, you know, that's down the road, maybe later this year, early next year type thing. And, um, you know, from there, I think the dollar will be back on solid ground and, and the overall longer term trend will, 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 you know, be positive once again. But um, there's some cross currents in the dollar now that may sound confusing. Um, in the in the interim, bottom line, we have an intermediate degree low in place, and the dollar's trying to rally, but it's struggling. Mm-hmm. Now, some people have suggested the U.S. dollar is losing value because of the high U.S. debt. But name a country anywhere that doesn't have a high debt load, uh, possibly because of the COVID recession. I mean, I can't. I, I think that that sort of thing is pretty much universal. Um, I, I I don't know that that's, you know, that I, I I just don't look at the market from that light. So I I can't I can't agree with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think? Is it just purely a cycle thing for the U.S. dollar? Then it's purely a cycle thing for the U.S. dollar. I mean, yeah, absolutely, and a structural thing. You know, I mean, we had the last four year cycle low was in in early two thousand and eighteen. And I don't know why I can just remember that because I remember when when we got into the first of the year, you was asking you know what would be um, you know something unexpected for the dollar and the dollar had, I mean what would be a, you know an unexpected move for the year and I said well the bottoming of the dollar and I said that because the dollar had been under such pressure you know in seventeen and going into eighteen and everybody was so bearish on it and we were moving into that low and I get the sense that we're feeling or hearing or sensing that same sort of thing here. Everybody is, is very pessimistic on the dollar and it's just the decline into the four year low. And, and what the dollar has done on a longer term basis, it's been building an enormous, uh, base. If we go back, I don't have a dollar chart in front of me. I'm trying to get one, but if we go back and look in time, the last several four year cycles have been building a, 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 uh, what I think is a much longer term base. Um, which technically is a, a very positive thing for the dollar. And, and the four-year cycles have been progressively moving higher since 2008. And so, again, I want to emphasize, while I think when I say there's a four-year cycle top, I'm not saying the dollar goes down four years. I'm saying I think that that cycle, which is measured from low to low, has peaked, and that, yes, there will be general pressure on the dollar into some time in probably, probably 21 and then we get, um, you know, a much longer term low in place. So I think it's a temporary weakness in the dollar, if you will. We'll have more with Tim Cycles Van Wood right after this.
Media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, Recycling Trade Publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Tim Cyclesman Wood. Tim, what's going on with bonds? Bonds are moving into, I think, um, an intermediate degree low that is due pretty much now. Um, there may be another shorter term cycle down, but bonds are moving into, um, uh, overall into an intermediate degree low. Now, longer term, I know this may sound confusing, but you know, you have, it's real simple. You have, you have movements within movements. You know what I mean? You have long term, intermediate term, short term. One can be going up, the other going down, and it gives you the, you know, a bit of a cross current. But longer term, I think the long end, you know, the 30 year, the five year and out, really. Um, I think that, that, that they are at, um, I'm trying to choose my words. I won't say risk, but the structure, if you will, suggests that we've seen longer term tops in those, in those bonds of, like I said, the, the, the longer term yield. So from my seat, I think the long end is poised for the, for, for those bonds to go down, which means the yield up. But on the shorter end, I don't see that structure. So I think on the shorter end, we're going to stay toward the zero bound, as you would say. But longer end, um, I think I think the, that uh, you know yields could rise. Now, as we move into this intermediate term low, which again I think is due probably sometime in November is is is, is the, the the timing for it. You know, I'll, I'll know when I see it when we get there. But sometime in November is the ideal timing for it. So once we get that low in place, then the longer term bond will move up and there will be, um, you know, a, a, a lower yield in the, in the intermediate term. But longer term, I think that would be, I think that's within the, how do I say it? I think that's within a, the context of a counter trend rally. And overall, I think that longer term bond is headed down with, with higher yield. Could you see the U.S. Fed bringing in negative interest rates? On the short end, I guess anything is possible. I, I do think that we're going to stay toward zero bound as, um, this economic, uh, as this economic crisis, which I think we're in, economic, um, the, trying to choose my words again, situation with the, you know, the COVID, the shutdown and so on and so forth. Unfold, yes, I think, I think the short end is going to stay low. And could we see negative rates? I suppose so. I mean, who would have thought we saw negative oil prices? And, you know, but we did. I mean, that sounded crazy six months ago, but we saw it. Or, uh, so I don't know, but I do think the pressure on the short end is toward, um, zero. What do you see happening to energy between now and New Year's? The, I think lower. I think lower. The, Looking at the structure, we had an intermediate degree cycle, um, low back. I don't have the chart in front of me. I think it was in September. And, um, I'm looking now. Intermediate term low. Yes, it was in September. And the structure suggests that we go lower. That, that should, that should be broken and we, the, the, the pressure should be on energy. The bias should be to the downside. Gold, how's it reacting to the non-election results so far? We had an intermediate degree low. Again, most asset classes bottom in the general, generally the same time frame with generally the same cycle. We had an intermediate degree low in gold back in uh, September, and that advance is still intact at that degree. Now, again, speaking in layers, if you will, at a higher degree, I, I think there is a good chance that we've seen some longer term, longer term cycle tops in gold with the nine year cycle top has potentially having peaked in August. I can't confirm that yet. I think, uh, you know, we're at a, a juncture and I do see some evidence to that effect. 
this intermediate term rally will serve as a test as to whether that higher degree cycle top has in fact occurred. My suspicion is that that higher degree cycle top may well be in place, but we need to see this intermediate term rally in order to confirm it. Uh, so the answer to the question, intermediate degree, gold is up. Do you uh, do any work on marijuana stocks with uh, another five states either approving recreational or medicinal marijuana? No, but I'll tell you what, if you will get someone, that would be fun to do, and I would be willing to do it because it would be relatively simple to do. But if you will get some of the our listeners or your listeners or whatever to send you a list of symbols, ticker symbols that's easy to get where you can, you know, it's, you know, something that's accessible where I could get the data on it. I'd be more than glad to look at that, give us something to talk about. And it'd be interesting to look at, actually. Tim, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thank you. My guest has been Tim Cyclesman Wood, editor of Cycles News and Views on Cyclesman.com. If you have any questions for Tim or anybody else on the show, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com our YouTube channel, Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter, at House Street. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com Radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.